Oh, here it is. Wait, is is that it? Um. Oh, this is. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, this is it, right? Just a second. Yes. Okay, I found it. All right, good. Pause it. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the news. Apex Legends has been performing fantastically, both in terms of player reviews yeah. and player numbers. And most importantly, gameplay, because I don't get shot through a fucking wall. We pretty much all know that from being on the internet, but what might be a little bit Life surprising is this graph. This graph shows player counts over time. Wow. That big line, that's Fortnite. The small near vertical red line, that's Apex. So is Apex larger than Fortnite? No, it is not. But here's the key takeaway. It is growing at a far, far faster rate. Wow. The success of Apex that's is crazy. one of those things that's actually even more insane once you have the real numbers in context. So Vince Sampella announced that Apex Legends had 25 million players in its first week. That's fucking insane. It took insane. Fortnite 52 days to hit that number, according to our best guess Only of the numbers. Only 52 days. The growth of Apex Jeez. is multiple times faster, and the question really is now one of how long will this growth rate hold? Because yeah, if they can hold this for another week or two, then they will have player counts equal to what Fortnite achieved in the first half year of its life wow. in only three weeks. Now, the revelation of this number has once again led to an aftermarket stock rally for EA, propelling them up yeah. towards $105, which Yo, I should have bought um, stocks in EA. the peak that they hit after Apex's um, initial success, which then, of course, corrected downwards to the more stable value of 97 For EA, it's tremendous news. Wow. They're near early October numbers with their stock, but still far away from their $148 Woo! peak. However, it's quite... Possible not that good. just simply was above their fundamental value. Of course, we saw a general plummet of tech stocks throughout that period anyway. Yeah. Overall, though, one thing is very clear. Investors see this as a fundamental change to EA's fortunes. They yes. previously did not have an entry in the Battle Royale market. They now do, and it's an incredibly successful one based on the numbers. However, we do need to be a bit more realistic. Both games had very different launches. Fortnite Save the World was remarkably average but oh, after yeah. PUBG did well epic slapped the in PVE a battle version. royale mode and they threw it out there launched fortnite in my view kind of sucked especially the shooting <laughs> which was significantly worse than in the current version of yeah. the game when fortnite launched it was clear how quickly it was made and the seams really were showing but at its core the nugget of unique gameplay the building mechanics that was intact and that gave epic a unique entry into the market from there, Fortnite's growth seems to have been, well, through traditional means. Network effect. Word I, feel like, I feel like the reason why Fortnite was so successful is that PUBG was unsuccessful. I think that if PUBG had just been functional and it had worked and the developers had a good relationship with the player base, Fortnite would have never taken off. Now, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I, I do really feel like Fortnite owes a lot of its success to PUBG's failure. ...of mouth. As the game improved, more people wanted to play, but they'd want to team up with their friends, so their friends would get involved. As you can see, this led to the growth rate being remarkably fast, yep. but also remarkably consistent, no doubt being helped by them also releasing on other platforms. While Fortnite is massive now, it really seems like it's strong word of mouth that initially carried it before it kind of had the crazy success. With Apex, though, we actually see something similar but different. It's totally word of mouth driven in my view, but the impure right. PUBG is too serious. It takes actual practice. It isn't casual enough to succeed. If you think Fortnite is a casual game that anybody can succeed in, it's because you're literally so bad at it, you don't even know how bad you are. Like it, you, you're so far off of the skill level of the game that you don't even realize that you're even on the skill level at all. Like, Fortnite is an incredibly complex, extremely difficult game. If you don't like that, that's fine. But you can't say it's not true. The execution of the whole thing is quite incredible. They essentially seem to have near-perfectly married word-of-mouth growth as a vehicle with the strengths of there being a big single marketing push, really leveraging the strengths of both to craft something that 
it has ended up feeling like almost a cultural event within the games industry. Fuck yeah. Everyone is talking about it, basically. So by concentrating the game's hype into this small period of time, Where's the part about me? achieve explosive word of mouth growth that uh, really Fortnite was not able to. Original Fortnite launched as a whimper, but then pivoted into the Battle Royale, which then grew rapidly, but not really explosively yeah. over time. But for Apex, it really seems to be quite different. I mean, Fortnite Battle Royale was pretty much a Hail Mary to salvage the original Fortnite. Well, Apex seems to have been far more carefully planned, launching in a far more polished state, but Can with you think some of that? vitally wow. important social mechanics. Apex is uniquely well designed for team play with its innovative pinging system and its jump master system, as well as just a wide range of character callouts and things that automatically happen that make it easy for players to get situational awareness. That's a huge thing. It also thing. did not launch with a solo queue mode. Now, if Apex wasn't a great game, that might have backfired. But here's the thing. Yeah. Apex is that good, and especially it's that good for team play. It's and like Overwatch. Yeah, you can solo and you can get match made with others, but most people would rather play with their friends. And I think that really is the core of why, well, your friends have probably been pestering you to play this game over the last week. Now, there's a lot more to go into with the You're success welcome, of this game. I think it shows there was a hole in the market, a battle royale shooter aimed at a more core demographic. Fortnite Shut the really fuck up, good. dumbass. I mean, it started to get worrying that it was actually bleeding into the, the industry yet? with the insane uh, battlefield skins that everyone would just go super goofy for the sake of the sweet, sweet mic transaction money well with apex we see something really a lot more adult aimed well okay either adult or you know a 15 year old who thinks that things with rounded shapes are for lame you uh, losers just now, like I what i said that, yes there was just this hole in the market yeah. that was able to target very well as much as fortnite had been doing really well it's clear that its art style and its tone were not working for everyone a no. lot of those people have picked up apex but i think more interestingly a lot of people were probably playing Fortnite because they didn't want to play the more sim-like PUBG, and Fortnite was the largest battle royale. Yep. I think many That's of exactly those people right. will now have an, uh, an option that's a lot more attractive to them that's also free. Call of Duty Blackout probably did appeal to them as oh, well, geez. but maybe not at that price. Oh, and that geez. really is a major $60. factor, especially in an influencer-driven world, as much as I hate that word so much. Um, I kind of view influencers as a little bit like leverage in a house mortgage. It kind of amplifies both the, the wins and the losses. But because of how our psychology works, we kind of have this survivorship bias that gives us an unrealistic view or sort of lay of the land. Now, as applied to video games, I just think that's kind of how it works. To companies, influencers kind of are that lab leverage where if they go with you, it's amazing. True. If they go against you, it's quite bad. They amplify successes and they also amplify losses. But there's kind of a key difference there's a small number of them and they wield a lot of power they also wait was that little yachty with the necklace that had the call of duty blackout logo on it <laughs> what the fuck bro like why okay all right you know whatever face a large number of social incentives if an influencer streams a free-to-play game that their fans can also enjoy then that has the potential to massively increase their viewership engagement and have that be a more sustainable long-term thing so yep. we see a small number of big influencers flock to a small number of games and as always it's the 80 20 principle rearing its head again i mean just take world of warcraft if asmongold is streaming or maybe soda is streaming the twitch numbers for wow double or maybe even triple yeah you know will that game's popularity have doubled or tripled probably not but there know, it is. what you see through the Twitch numbers, and that really is the streamer leverage. I think that this is really one of the things that has propelled oh, Apex. No. From a streamer I know perspective, I clip this they get is. a new game to check out. That's great. They also get a new free-to-play game that their audience can check out. And that's even better because if their audience are able <laughs> to play in the game, then that can be a more long-term game for them to essentially main at, or at least have the, their default. Look at my head. And Apex was basically oh, no. a cultural event, and that just just acts as a positive multiplier on all of those fa uh, factors. And then also, by working well with streamers, Apex has constricted the oxygen supply to other games while enriching its own. Yep. Bit of a strange analogy, but, I mean, just get a load of these numbers. Apex Legends had 20% of Twitch viewership over its launch week, averaging 253,000 viewers, double Fortnite's 115k average. It generated 11 million more watch hours than Fortnite, but was actually streamed for 600,000 fewer hours. So there was a lower supply of Apex Legends stream content, but higher hours watched. What does that mean? It means that big name streamers, i.e. those who have an equal contribution Ninja. in terms of number of hours streamed, yep. but a massive uh, contribution in terms of hours actually watched, it means they flocked to it. 
part of this is natural, but part of it is EA. They worked hard to get streamers on board. The likes of Dr. Disrespect attending pre-launch events for this game before it was even announced. Overall, EA, as odd as this seems, they have correctly understood the value of them and they have absolutely used that to their advantage that's who yeah doesn't do that and i'm gonna get a bit personal yeah, here. who blizzard. doesn't do that i can't believe i'm saying that blizzard need to take a leaf from ea from ea's book but man they really need to imagine being in a world like this is like an episode of black mirror blizzard needs to learn from ea oh no oh no okay let's uh, let's go let's go not to smack talk anyone, um, but putting safe streamers on the launcher and, you know, putting me in the launcher for that promo thing we did, that's not enough. Asmongold might be an edgy boy from time to time, but he's authentic, he has texture to his str uh, stream, he's massive and audiences love him. In losing him as a main WoW streamer, just think about how many hours Blizzard have uh, lost being watched in World of Warcraft. And let's be real, the likes of Sloopbag, Towley, myself, t and &E, we appeal to existing WoW fans. We don't have that kind of larger than ourselves personality thing going on that gets us past the WoW crowd. And we're probably not going to engage new people like Asmongold would. And the reason why I bring this up is because Dr. Disrespect has been massive for this game. Yeah. And he's not free from controversy. But he has been marked for Apex. He's not clean and shiny. And that's actually part of why people like him. No, he's uh, not. And for another Blizzard example, just look at QXC. You know, he got got for Overwatch. People like him. Uh, and for another Blizzard example, just look at QXC. <laughs> Cheeto. <laughs> There's QXCs right there. Okay. You know, he got got for Overwatch, and then he beat Overwatch his number streaming minecraft the very next day yeah understanding the leverage of streamers is going to make and break so many games and to the people at blizzard and there's a few i mean <laughs> you guys know there's a, like there's a few of you who value traditional media a lot you're going to lose out you're going to underperform at your jobs the new generation is going to leave you in the dust what else well i think we just need to wait and see with apex Ultimately, I think this is a game that's bloody fantastic in terms of its quality. I think that it being fantastic really is at the core of why it has been able to leverage um, the growth strategies that I've mentioned in this video. Personally, I'm quite glad that Apex is a more core game that is doing very well. Fuck um, yeah. I personally don't really like the more casual feeling Fortnite. Um, obviously, it can be played to an extremely high level. But yeah, it's just nice that because it's an industry that follows trends, it's nice to see a successful game that's very different. That's right. Um, not that Apex isn't goofy. It certainly is characterful, but I think it's uh, in a, you know, a different way to Fortnite, and that's a good just thing. Slide down and it's also lovely to see something do well in the Titanfall universe, especially since um, well, you know, there's something else coming for Titanfall this year. We just don't know what I yet. Even know that Personally, is. I think it must be really nice for Vince Zampella and the rest of the team. Call of Duty 2 and 4 for me especially oh, are geez. really special games. I've Another played them COD. for dozens, maybe hundreds of hours at my local land center, you know, winning free game time at the land center, maybe 20 quid, maybe just a wham bar in the tournaments we'd uh, play. Um, narratively, they're also actually really strong. Uh, Call of Duty gets memed on by a lot of people. Uh, you know, you just think of the meme worthy, you know, mom, get the camera, all that stuff. But trust Press me, there's F a lot to going pay on respects. there. Just look at the cultural criticism that's that throughout the entire of the Call of Duty 4 narrative. Anyway, um, seeing them struggle as that series did better, especially, you know, leaving Infinity Ward, that was kind of rough. Then seeing them struggle with Titanfall for years was kind of rough. So for them, it must be really nice to finally have that other big success especially because it's one that is grounded in them making a really, really solid game. So there you go. That is my thoughts on Apex, how it has affected Damn. the EA game stock, what that means for the industry, the sheer just that, that's crazy, fucking crazy true. velocity of its growth, as well as the power of getting streamers on board. And yes, some little shots fired at Blizzard because, uh, I mean, yeah, th look, there's people there that are pretty out of touch. So, um we need to get with the game. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, and with that, I will see you next time. And that's the T, sis. There it is, man. Like, I, I don't even know what else to say. Like, I mean, like, fuck. B just a little out of touch. Like, they honestly, Blizzard, if you're listening to this, why don't you take some of that $15 million that you're throwing away on some dude that doesn't give a fuck about it because he's already a multimillionaire, 
give me like a hundred thousand dollars and I'll set you up with a content plan for doing online stuff. You guys have no fucking idea what you're doing. Like you're actually completely fucking clueless. Like you're you have no idea. Like anybody, you're right, dude. What? You take that money and fucking spit it on fast food and more I, cameras. How many? I, like I mean, well, that's, well, that's too well, many Burger Kings, too many Baconators, too many hot dogs. I couldn't spend. I spent like maybe like three thousand dollars on that. All the rest of the money would probably end up going to uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Lot tokens. Going to the, No. Okay, here, here's what I'm trying to say. Blizzard. Why were you not the ones that made the 1v1 dueling tournament? Because you're out of touch. You have no idea what you're doing. Why are you not doing RBG tournaments? Because you don't know what you're doing. You have no idea what you're doing. You can't even manage to figure out how to set up an event. Your idea of an event was to have random dipshits sc screenshotting demons in Outland. Is that is that really what is that 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 is that the best idea you had? You're so stupid. <laughs> With no success. Literally a constant, uh, a constant line of failures. Well, uh, Think uh, hold about on that. now. What? No, no, I mean, you can't say no success, dude. It's oh. a billion dollar company. I mean, look, Blizzard and Activision, they're both huge companies. They've, you know, they, they've done things right. Everybody knows them. Look, just because they've had a few rough months or years or whatever, that doesn't mean they're going out of business. Okay, so don't I didn't be say doom that they were going out of business. I, I didn't say that. What I said is that ever since social media has been an influencing factor in terms of selling games and game sales, Blizzard has incorrectly utilized its influence, and they have no idea, and it's been completely mismanaged for the last five years. And they have led, that has led to them losing fucking money. That's yeah, what I'm saying. I'm just saying... And I'm just saying. Okay. Look, they've done some they things know, right. They know what they're doing. They know how to make games. Yeah. They don't know. They don't know how to advertise them. They clearly and don't. And said, can you can you imagine the drama that would have happened if we had like a if Blizzard did that one v one tournament? Yeah. And the Cervantes issue happened there. Yeah. It would, it would be the front it page of Reddit. Been, Everybody yeah. would talk about it, and then everyone would tune into the next one to see if it's going to happen again. I would have over 100,000 views.